Welcome to Reeducated TV, where we keep you informed. We will be reading from the book History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth. This image is of Geoffrey of Monmouth a historian and author of the Kings of Britain, which can be found at Tintern Station, Monmouth, Wales. And this image is of three black Scottish Wales English kings. As you can see, the image dates to 1667. The conjecture surrounding this artifact is that it must be King Lud and his two sons. But the dating is off. King Lud lived between 73 BC and 38 BC. This image is of King Lud with his two sons named Androgeus and Tenuantius, found at the Lud Gate or the Ludus Gata. There once lived a king named Don Wallo Malmutius, who was the son of Clotten. The ancestor of Lud is Beli, or Belenius, whose father was Don Wallo Malmutius. At length rose a youth of great spirit named Don Wallo Malmutius, who was the son of Clotten, king of Cornwall, and excelled all the kings of Britain in valour and gracefulness of person. When his father was expired, he was no sooner possessed of the government of that country. He then made war against Imner, king of Loegria, and perished him in battle. Herupan Rudacus, king of Cambria, and Staterius, king of Albania, had a meeting wherein they formed an alliance together and marched with their armies into Dunwallow's country to destroy all before them. Don Wallow met them with 30,000 men and gave them battle. Malmutius and his soldiers were victorious over their enemies. They renewed the assault by pursuing their enemies while they dispersed. Don Wallow, Malmutius marched into their countries, destroyed their towns and cities and reduced the people under his obedience. When he had made an entire reduction of the whole island, he prepared for himself a crown of gold and restored the kingdom to its ancient state. This prince established what the Britons call the Malmutine Laws, which are famous among the English to this day. In these, among other things, of which St. Gildas wrote a long time after, he enacted that the temples of the gods, as also cities, should have the privilege of giving sanctuary and protection to any fugitive or criminal that should flee to them from the enemy. He likewise enacted that the ways leading to those temples and cities, as also husband man's plows, should be allowed the same privilege, so that in his days the murders and cruelties committed by robbers were prevented and everybody passed safe without violence offered him. At last, after a reign of forty years spent in these and other acts of government, he expired and was buried in the city of Trinovantium, near the Temple of Concord, which he himself built when he first established his laws. Dunwallo Malmutius had two sons, Belenius and Brenius. Belenius, also known as Beli, was the eldest son. After the passing of their father, a quarrel happened between the brothers, who were both ambitious of succeeding to the kingdom. The dispute was which of them should have the honor of wearing the crown after a great many sharp conflicts that passed between them the friends of both interposed and brought them to agree on the division of the kingdom on these terms 
that Belenius should enjoy the crown of the island with the dominions of Loegria, Cambria, and Cornwall, because, according to the Trojan's constitution, the right of inheritance would come to him as the elder, and Brennius, as being the younger, should be subjected to his brother and have for his share Northumberland, which extended from the Humber to the Caithness. The covenant, therefore, being confirmed upon these conditions, they ruled the country for five years in peace and justice, but such a state of prosperity could not long stand against endeavours of faction. Brennius was convinced by his peers that he should take the crown from his brother, and how could he bear subjection to Belly, to whom by parentage and blood were of equal? Besides your experience in military affairs, which you have gained in several engagements, be no longer bound by a treaty, which is a reproach to you, but marry the daughter of Elsingius, king of the Norwegians, that with his assistance you may recover your lost dignity. The young man, inflamed by with these suggestions, hearkened to them and went to Norway where he married the king's daughter. As his flatterers had advised him, Belenius, Beli, was informed of Brennius' plans and marched into Northumberland and possessed himself of that country and the cities in it, which he garrisoned with his own men. Brennius heard what his brother did and prepared a fleet to return to Britain with a great army of Norwegians. But while he was at sea, he was overtaken by Gowichthlak, king of the Dacians, who had pursued him. This prince had been deeply in love with the young lady that Brennius had married. There was a battle at sea, and Brennius' wife was captured and taken to Northumberland to Belly. A few days after appeared Brennius with his fleet and arrived in Albany, and having received information of the capture of his wife and others, and that his brother had seized the kingdom of Northumberland in his absence, he sent his ambassador to him to demand the restitution of his wife and the kingdom, and if he refused them, to declare that he would destroy the whole island from sea to sea and perish his brother whenever he could come to an engagement with him. On the other hand, Bellinus absolutely refused to comply with his demands and assembling together the whole power of the island went into Albania to battle Brennius. They met and the battle took place in the woods called Calatarium. So great was the slaughter that the wounded fell in a heap. At last, the Britons prevailed. The Norwegians fled with their shattered troops to their ships, but were pursued by belly and terminated without mercy. 15,000 men fell in the battle nor there were a thousand of the men that escaped unheard. Some time had passed after Brennius, being made Duke of the Allobroges, returned to Britain to fight with his brother. They both met with their armies and was about to battle. Conwenna, their mother, was yet living, ran in great haste through the ranks, impatient to see her son, whom she had not seen for a long time. As soon, therefore, as she had with trembling steps reached the place where she stood, she threw her arms about his neck and in transport kissed him. Then uncovering her bosom, she addressed herself to him 
in words interrupted by sighs. My son, remember these breasts which gave you suck, and the womb wherein the Creator of all things formed you, and from whence he brought you forth into the world, while endured the greatest anguish by the pains than which I suffered for you. I entreat you to hear my request. Moved by these representations of his mother, he obeyed her with a composed mind, and putting off his helmet of his own accord, went straight with her to his brother. Belly, seeing him approach with a peaceable countenance, threw down his arms and ran to embrace him, so that now, without more ado, they again became friends and disarming their forces, marched with them peaceably together to Trinovantium, and hereafter connotation what enterprise to undertake. They prepared to conduct their confederate army into the province of Gaul, and reduced that entire country to their subjection. Rome was taken by Brennius, because of the covenant that was broken by Rome, Brennius oppressed the Italians in a most tyrannical manner and returns to Britain after some time. There were many rulers and kings after Belly, and then there was Elidors and 33 successors. Then there was Heli, who reigned 40 years, he had three sons, Lud, Kazabolan, and Nennius, of whom Lud, being the eldest, succeeded to the kingdom after his father's passing. He became famous for the building of cities and for rebuilding the walls of Trinovantium, which he also surrounded with innumerable towers. He likewise commanded the citizens to build houses and all other kinds of structures in it so that no city in all foreign countries to a great distance round could show more beautiful palaces. He was withal a warlike man and very magnificent in his feasts and public entertainments and though he had many other cities yet he loved this above them all, and resided in it the greater part of the year, for which reason it was afterwards called Kerlud, and by the corruption of Kerr London, and again by change of languages, in process of time, London, as also by foreigners who arrived here, and reduced this country under their subjection. It was called Londres. At last, when he was expired, his body was buried by the gate, which to this time is called in British tongue after his name, Parthlud, and in Saxon, Ludisgata. He had two sons, Androgeus and Tanuantius who were incapable of governing on an account of their age, and therefore their uncle, Cosby alone, was preferred to the kingdom. In their room, as soon as he was crowned, he began to display his generosity and magnificence to such a degree that his fame reached to distant kingdoms, which was the reason that the monarchy of the whole kingdom came to be invested in him and not in his nephews. Notwithstanding, Kazabolan, from an impulse of piety, would not suffer them to be without their share in the kingdom, but assigned a large part of it to them for Kent and Androgynous and the dukedom of Cornwall and Tenuantius. But he himself, as possessing the crown, had the sovereignty over them and all the other princes of the island. 
that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.